What's on guys, J Hoyd back with you today. Welcome back to episode number three of our franchise mode with the Anaheim Ducks. Now, if you guys remember last, at least the last two videos, we started out this franchise mode as another team that is rebuilding, is trying to get young talent, develop them, get some good draft picks, and then rebuild the team. You guys know what a rebuild is if you've ever seen a franchise mode or if you've ever seen it in real life. That you try to get the young talent, the prospects, all that fun stuff, get the draft, all the draft picks, all the actual prospects, and then build up a young core and hopefully that will lead you to success. Which was the plan for this series. Until we made the playoffs in our first year. At a record of 42, 31, and 9, we end the season 6, 3, and 1 in the last 10. But we do have a difficult first round matchup with the Colorado Avalanche. Now, although we're not expecting much, anything can happen in the playoffs. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's see how far we can go. And, you know, if we make a run, then great. If not, then that's kind of what we were expecting anyway. So, let's get right into it. First game versus the Colorado Avalanche. We are away, obviously, given that they have the significantly better record. Uh, Byram and Lundstrom get a pair of goals there. Second period, nothing. Let's watch the third period play out. Early goal by Comfer. So if you guys haven't seen any of my franchise mode videos, usually once it gets to the playoffs, we simulate it like it is on your screen. And I just realized we are covering up all of the action. So five minutes left in the third. We need a goal to tie it up here. However, New Hook does get the goal. 3-1 victory in game one for Colorado. So although we uh, we did score a goal, but you know we gotta if we're gonna try to win, we gotta get more goals than just one, especially against a good team like the Avalanche. Let's keep it going. First period, Rantanen gets a goal. Second period, Landeskog. Oh boy! All right, so uh, two other big stars get goals from in low. Klingberg gets a goal from the back end, quickly followed by the basically their first line. In McKinnon, uh, that's Colin White. I actually realized we had both of the White brothers on our squad. Uh, Hordquist gets a goal. Tied 3-3. Even in shots, too. That's kind of surprising. Can we actually, like, tie this or, uh, you know, win this here? No, go to overtime. We'll take it. All periods on the power play. Nope. Okay. Power play for Colorado. Nope. Not for them either. Ah, uh, Colorado takes it. Landis Gog again. Their top line gets it done. So we do take them to overtime, which is a, I guess you'd say a promising start, if you will, uh, at least to that game. On to game three, though. We're in our home barn. I probably should actually learn more about the Ducks is what I kind of realized. But either way, first period, no score. Second period, no score. Going into the third, all tied up here. Come on, this is this is our chance here. Almost even shots within a couple of each other. Power play for Colorado. Goes down to five on three. Still a tie score. Can we get a late one here? Get a late one. Final four power play. Damn it. Last minute. Back to overtime. Guess it doesn't really matter. All periods. We got a zero zero game. Power play. The long power play. <sighs> Darn. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Come toi from our second line, third line. Not sure where he is. Gorgiev allows the goal, puts us up in the game in overtime. So at least we won a game, right? We're at home. We won a game. I guess you could say that's promising. Our other team, though, where are they? Behind me. Vegas is not doing well in this playoffs. They're losing 0-3 to Chicago, another team that... Very surprising that they made the playoffs. Game four, though, first period, Colorado, Cogliano gets the goal. Second period, still same score. All right, right out the third period. We are shooting them by, like, five, so that's good. Uh, oh, we're still on one speed. Oops. Terry gets a goal by Gorgiev. Terry gets a second goal by Gorgiev. Newhook gets a goal to tie it back up. Grant gets a goal from our fourth line. 
Five goal performance here in the third period. O'Connor gets a goal past Gibson. All right. Big spree there. What else do we got? Five and a half minutes left. Four and a half. Keep it ticking down. Can we get a late one here? No late game heroics. We'll take it. Goes to overtime. We did it once. Can we do it again? Win against the Colorado Avalanche in the playoffs. Power play. No good. Can we get a late one? Or we're going to go double overtime. Which, which one are we feeling today? I'll take either. As long as we win. Do I want us to win, actually? Like, does it, does it matter? Ah, Colorado gets it. Helm gets one in double overtime. I mean, I'm trying to cheer for our team, right? Because, like, we're, it's still our team right now. But also kind of sucks because, like, now I kind of want us to win since we're already in the playoffs and we're almost, we're guaranteed a, at least a top 16 pick. All right. Let's keep it going here. Early power play gets it done. Zegris. And Terry, the dynamic duo. A third one by Lucic. Do I want to keep this out? Okay, Colorado does get two back, though. Rantanen and McKinnon. Second period. Uh-oh, they tied it up. Rantanen gets, a, uh, gets their third. We scored the first three. They scored the next three. They scored the next four. Rantanen with his hat trick in over or in, uh, in overtime. In the playoffs, Zegris with his second of the game. Man, these second and third periods go absolutely nuts. Minute and a half, no late goals. Okay, back to overtime. Come on. I think actually if we lose this, we're out. Because it's 1-3. Come on, 10 minutes left. Power play. Okay, we survived that. Power play for us? Yes, we got it. Colin White gets the goal. We get out shot in the game. But that's okay. And all that matters is the score at the end. Game number six. We are back home. What can we do from our home barn? Put in two goals in the first. That sounds good to me. Grant and Lundstrom get goals for us. Landis got gets one for Colorado. Second period. Oh boy. Four goals on the board for Colorado. O'Connor, Rodriguez, and Ranton gets two. Well, that might have done it. Because whenever we're behind or in the high-pressure situations, we haven't really done too well. However, Terry does get a goal. They get on the power play right after. Yeah, okay. Strom, we're bringing it back. 5-4. Okay, we have a chance here. We're within striking, it, striking distance. Three minutes left. Two minutes. One minute. Eleven seconds. And that's it. Although, you know, we were excited to see our team kind of play out. I'm not surprised about the finish. Like, I'm really not. Like, anything would have been better than nothing. So we'll watch our, NA or our AHL team in the San Diego Gulls uh, play out the rest of their playoffs. They lost to Henderson. So, again, we weren't expecting too much in our first year. Uh, but let's fast forward here to the end of the year and kind of see what the plan is for the offseason. The playoffs are complete. The Tampa Bay Lightning win the Stanley Cup. The Ontario Reign win the Calder Cup. Congrats to them. We had to upgrade, maintain, and get all the upgrades to our arena. And then we'll be talking about the offseason. So here we are at the start of the offseason. Uh, nothing as far as personnel has changed kind of at all. We had one like AHL guy, uh, well, not AHL guy, but Ryan Kessler, um, he retired. But other than that, nothing crazy has happened. We are all kind of ready for the entry draft and the rest of the offseason. We're going to basically fire all the coaches, uh, AHL and NHL, try to find and get all the best scouts and work in on that whole system try to get as many um you know good well-rounded scouts as possible mainly focus on the usa the uh i'll say the the canadian hockey leagues the whl the ohl and the qmjhl and then kind of russia is like the biggest like ones you usually get decent prospects from uh, of course we'll have to go over to the nordic uh, region as well as the europe and all the other ones in between so Going in, this is going to be the plan. I kind of already did some interviews 
um, with some prospects. We have the 18th overall pick, and we have these three guys on the trade block. Now, the main reason I have these guys on the trade block, let's start with the bottom two, Henrik and Silverberg, both players making five plus million dollars for another year after this year. Both kind of aren't really part of the future with this team. And it's going to create a lot of flexibility getting rid of both of these contracts. Um, we already have kind of our center future with Zegris and McTavish along with Dylan Strom there. So that's kind of the top three. We don't need a guy making five point whatever million dollars uh, to play on the fourth line. Just does not make sense. I'd rather pay someone else a boatload more money like a five million dollars to play on a higher line plus we need to get our winger situation intact get some higher quality um you know scoring wingers to play around zegris to play around terry to play around strom and to increase our top six winger situation so both those guys we're going to try to get rid of we're not going to be able to get much uh, for these guys, just based off of their trade value, uh, Silverberg, maybe we'll get like a third round pick. Um, Henrik might get a second, maybe some more, not exactly sure. Our next player, John Klingberg. Now, he has a ton of trade value, which is great. So what we did was we actually signed him to an extension. Now, what we did was he was making $7 million for one year on his old contract. In order to sign him to any other deal as of before the draft, he wanted like $10 million, which for a rebuilding team, he wanted like three years at like $10 million. It didn't really make sense. Uh, for So for a 30-year-old guy that put up really good numbers this year, obviously was one of our best players, it made sense to get try to give him a lot of money. But we also have Drysdale and we have Fabro. And we could also use that, again, to kind of bolster the rest of our team. So we signed him to a four-year extension for, I think it's $7.5 million, which isn't a bad deal at all. But in order to make our team better, we may need to get rid of him or do something else with other players. So he's on the trade block. Do I want to get rid of him? Not really. But if we can get something even better back, or we could upgrade, get a top four left defenseman to play alongside of either Fabro or Drysdale. It would elevate their game more too and uh, potentially help us out with our winger situation as well. So uh, we have our wants on there. We want all of our draft picks. We want young players, prospects, and young forwards to try to help out um, that situation. Other than that, like I said, we have the 18th overall pick. We did scout some players. We have some um, watch listed. Most of these guys we're not going to be able to get, obviously. The one being Connor Bernard, uh, which would be a great pickup. But like I said, 18th overall pick. We have, what is that? One, two, three. Three second round picks, two third round picks, two fourth round picks, a fifth and a sixth. So we have a bit of draft picks available to us, and I intend on using most likely all of them and potentially what we get back for Henrik and Silverberg we might add to that list but the entirety of the uh, offseason the draft the signing stage and the preseason will be in next episode but that's going to do it for episode number three of our franchise mode with the Anaheim Ducks like I said, we made the playoffs, but we were not expecting much as we only made it through the first round. We did end up winning two games. We lost 4-2 to two against Colorado, which was more than expected. You know, we weren't, you know, expecting much. So we did more than we thought we did this year for a team that was rebuilding to get to the playoffs and win two games against one of the best teams in the league. It's pretty good. Hopefully we can uh, build on that and even if we can quick rotate this and uh, and get some scoring wingers, we can upgrade our defensemen and get some coaches in there that can fit our team better, then we can build a winning team. Do I expect it to happen next year? No. Would it be great? Of course. 
but that all will happen and unfold in the next one. But if you did enjoy, hit that like button down below if you haven't yet, or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe, turn those post notifications on so you never miss an upload, and don't forget, you can always change your mind later. But all that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next one.